Hi there, shall we start with the year 7, 11 plus entrance exam paper for math and this is a paper from Summer Notes School um, as you can see on the top right corner it is around 10 page not that much to be honest but it can be quite challenging especially when it's a paper from Summer Notes um, shall we get on with it? Okay, well page 2 is blank, everything is fine well let's start with page 3, question 1 Okay, so in this case it says, label each arrow with the value indicated on the scale. It seems like that it's somewhere between 1 and 2, and by division I think we can tell that this is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and another 0 0.2 right there. So where the arrow is pointing towards is supposed to be 1.6. Let's keep going to the next question, shall we? Part B uh, is getting a bit more complicated comparing to part A. Um, it's between 1.9 and 2. Well, it's somewhere closer to 2. Um, and it seems like that the difference between 1.9 and 2 is 0 0.1. Let me put my procedure right there. 2 minus 1.9 equal to 0 0.1. And how many interval do we got between 1.9 and 2? It seems like 10, but let's double check, shall we? One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. So now that we know it's 10 interval, um, I think we can reach the conclusion that each interval is 0 0.01. But let me just label it there. 0 0.01, 0 0.01, and 0 0.01. And I think we can tell that where the arrow is pointing towards is 2 minus 0 0.03. And in this case, it's supposed to be 1.97. And let's move on to the next question. And um, it is between 0 and 0 0.01. Just like before, why don't we do a subtraction and then we can figure out the value that is represented by each interval. 0 0.01 minus 0 equal to 0 0.01. We have just acknowledged the fact that we've got 10 intervals right there. So each part is supposed to be 0 0.001. Let me label it there. 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, and another 0 0.001. So where the arrow is pointing to us, it is 0 0.004. There we go. That is how we finish the first question. Well, let's move on to the next question, shall we? Okay, in this case it says, um, please calculate part A to E. Let's do it one by one, shall we? For part A, um, it seems like that we got multiplication and addition. Um, we're going to do the multiplication first, by the way. We are going to get 105. 8 plus 105, that gives us the final answer of 113. There we go. And let's move on to part B. Um, let's just do it in order, shall we? 8 minus 5, 3 plus 21 give us 24 and that is the final answer for the question and then for part c um i'm afraid that we have to do the operation that is in the bracket so 5 minus 8 that would be minus 3 what is 21 divided by minus 3 that would give us minus 7 at the end there we go and then for part d i suggest that we should try our best to get rid of the bracket equal to minus 8, minus 5, which equals to minus 13, and that's the final answer. And finally, for the part E, and you might remember that in this case, because it's um, minus 8 squared, that means it's minus 8 times minus 8. we got a two negative number multiplied with each other. You will definitely get a positive number out of that. 64, and that's the answer for the question. All right, that is everything on the first page, and then let's move on. Well, question three says, Patrick spends 375.84 on his electricity bill each year. How much is his bill each month? Well, the first question that we need to figure out is, that how many months do we got in a year? We got 12 months, so we are going to do a division right there. 375.84 divided by 12. And based on the knowledge that you've learned about um, uh, division, well, let's do it one by one, shall we? So we've got 3, we're going to get 36. 
Um, so 37 minus 36 gives us 1, and we'll get 15.84 after that. So 15 divided by 12, that would get us 1 as well. Um, and then we got 38. Well, we need 12 times 3, 36. And finally, we got 24 at the end. Um, I think that would be 24 divided by 12, which is 2. Okay, the final answer is 31, 32 pounds. Uh, for part B, it says, how much does his electricity bill cost him over five years? So every year is 375.84, and if it's five years, we need to time it by five. So this is multiplication. 375.84 times five, which would give us, well, it's based on the previously learned calculation for multiplication, isn't it? So it's a zero. And we got 2, uh, 42, okay, and 4, uh, 5 times 5, 25, 29, okay, and then we've got another 2 right there, 5 times 7, 35, um, I think we got 7, and then finally the 3, 3 plus 3 times 5, which is, I think, 18, right, so over 5 years, it's going to cost him, one thousand eight hundred seventy nine pounds twenty, and there we go. That's the answer for part B. And then let's move on to question four, part A. Um, for this part is multiplication between fractions. Let's do it one by one. When you've got a multiplication like that, multiply both of the numerator together and multiply both of the denominator together. You get one times one, four times three which would be 1 over 12. There we go. And for the next question, this is a division between fractions, so we might need to flip something over. 1 over 4 divided by 1 over 3, which means times by 3, which would give us 3 over 4. And finally, at the bottom, it's addition. Well, I suggest if it's a um, mixed fraction like that, and then let's try to split up the integer and the fraction, shall we? Let's convert it into 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 4 plus 1 over 3. Rearrange it. 3 plus 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3. 7 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3. Uh, double check the previous answer. Have we ever tried to calculate 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3? Not really, so we need to do that. Okay, 7 plus. Make sure the 104 and 103 that they got the same denominator before you try to add them up together. So we are going to convert it into equivalent fraction. 3 over 12 plus 4 over 12. Finally, we'll get to the final answer. 7 and 7 over 12. There we go. And then let's move on to the next page. Okay, so for question five, it says, place the following number in descending order. Mm, it seems like that we got a fraction, we got percentage, we got decimal, and it's your choice. Um, in whatever way that you want to convert them into, you can convert everything into a percentage, everything into a fraction. Um, in this particular case, I would try to use fraction. To sort it out. Um, okay, so for 0 0.6, can I convert it into 6 over 10? And for 70%, I think I'm going to convert it into 7 over 10. Yeah. And then just by looking at all the fractions that we have, they do not have the same denominator. We're going to try to do something to make sure that they do have the same denominator. Um, looking at 5, 10, 6, 10, 3, I would say a common multiple for all of these denominator will be nice. Let's convert all the fraction into equivalent fraction with a denominator of 30, shall we? Um, time 4 by 6, which is 24. And this is 18 over 30. And for this one, it would be 25 over 30. And for this one, it'll be 21 over 30. Finally, we got 20 over 30. Okay, this is much easier than before because the question said in descending order, we're going to start with the largest 
and in this case I think it is this one 5 over 6 and the next one it will be 4 over 5 and then we've got 70% and the next one will be 2 over 3 finally we reach to the point of 0 0.6 okay there we go that's that for this question let's move on to question 6 A swimming club has 480 members, two-fifths of the member are women, one-third of the member are men, the rest of the members are children. What percentage of the member are women? Uh, it seems like that this is a conversion question between a fraction and percentage. This is something that I would recommend us to do. Uh, do not rush into the percentage, let's just focus on the fraction, shall we? So the question told us is two-fifths. 2 over 5, shall we convert it into an equivalent fraction with 100 as denominator, times 20 on both top and bottom, uh, I think we'll get 40 over 100. And then, convert it into a percentage, 40%. And there we go, that's the final answer. For part B, how many of the members are men? We need to figure out the actual number, so I suggest that we use the total number for the members, um, multiply with one third, which is the proportion of the member that are men. You get 480 divided by 3, and that would give us 160, which is the final answer. And then at the very bottom, it says, How many of the members are children? We have to figure out the members that are women first before we can get to the answer for part C. So let's just do the calculation again. Uh, in this case, it is 480 times 40%. 480 times 0 0.4. 48 times 4. That would give us 4 times 8, 32, 3, 3 plus 4 times 4, 16, which is 192 women members. Um, so we are going to do a subtraction at the end. 480, subtract the number for men, subtract the number for women, and I think we can get to the final answer. So 480, subtracting 352. And then the final answer would be 128. We've got 128 members that are children. There we go. That's that for this question. And let's move on to the next page. Okay, for question 7, it says write down the next two terms in each of the following sequence. Let's figure out the pattern before we write out the term, shall we? It says 5, 11, 17, 23. It seems like that is increasing. Uh, 5 plus 6 equal to 11. 11 plus 6 equal to 17. 17 again plus 6 equals 23. So what is 23 plus 6? 29. And what is 29 plus 6? 35. And then let's move on to the next question. Well, the next question is a, is in a descending order. Uh, 52 subtracting 7 would equal to 45. And I think it's the same thing here, but we can always double check, of course. 31 minus 7, that would give us 24. 24 minus 7, that would give us 17. Okay, there we go. And then for part C, uh, 1, 2, 4, 8. Oh, rather interesting situation. Um, so I hope you guys can see that. 2 is 1 plus 1. 4 is 2 plus 2. And 8 in this case is 4 plus 4. So the next value I think will be 8 plus 8, which is 16. And then the next one after that would be 32. Finally, when we get to part D, 3, 8, 15, and 24, well, let's try to figure out the difference first, shall we? In this case, that would be um, plus 5, and then we're going to have plus 7, and the next one is plus 9. Well, it seems like the next one should be plus 11, so 24 plus 11 is 35, and 35 plus 13, that would be 48. So there we go, that's the answer for the question. Let's move on to the next one.
question eight. Here is a ratio question. In a fruit yogurt weighing one hundred seventeen gram, the ratio of weight of the fruit to weight of yogurt is two to seven. Why don't I interpret that into an equation? Fruit to yogurt is two to seven. Could you calculate the weight of the fruit? Got two portion of fruit, seven portion of yogurt. So how many portion do I got in total? I got nine portion. And、uh, since we know the total weight of the fruit yogurt, why don't we try to figure out、um, how much weight is represented by one portion by doing this? One hundred seventeen divided by two plus seven. Oh, wait a minute. Two plus seven. Equal to one hundred seventeen divided by nine, which equal to one,、um, and then we got twenty seven divided by nine, which is three. Okay, so each portion represent thirteen gram. And the question is interested in the weight of the fruit. It seems like that the weight of the fruit has only two portion. Two portion times thirteen give us the final answer of twenty six gram. So that's the final answer for the question. All right. Now that we've finished question eight, let's then move on to question nine. A bottle of blackcurrant cordial makes enough drink to fill sixty glasses when it's diluted in a ratio of one part cordial to four parts water. How many glasses of drink would a bottle of cordial make if it is diluted into the ratio one part cordial to five parts water? Okay, this is a rather interesting question. For sixty glasses that we have. Is made of one portion of blackcurrant cordial and four portion of water. One to four. Why don't we figure out exactly how many glasses of the blackcurrant cordial can occupy? Um, sixty divided by one plus four equal twelve. So for the blackcurrant cordial, it's just one portion, which means it only can fill. Twelve glasses. Okay, and then as the question told us, they are going to dilute the black currant cordial with five parts of the water, which is one to five. So in total, how many portion do we got here? We got six portion. Each portion is twelve glasses. Six times twelve. Let's see how much that equal to. That should equal to seventy two glasses. And that's the final answer for the question. Let's move on to the next page.、Mm, it seems like that is related to geometry. Finally, we got some shapes and angles. For question ten, it says in the diagram below, and by the way, it's not to scale, so you're not supposed to measure it. Find the angle marked as x and y. Okay, in this case, I suggest that we start with y. It seems like that is the only angle in the triangle that is not known. So I suggest that we do a subtraction. The sum of all the angle in the triangle is one hundred eighty degree. Subtracting eighty four degree, subtracting fifty two degree. Let's see how much we get out of that. One hundred eighty subtracting um one hundred and thirty six degree, and the final answer would be forty four degree. That's the value for y. Y equal to forty-four degree. Okay. As for the value for x, x equal to well, as you can see, x plus y is really just the straight line, isn't it? So that's one hundred eighty as well, minus forty-four. That would be one hundred thirty-six degree. There we go. We find the angle x and y.